Shalom. This video is commentary for the Satellite Bible Atlas, maps 1-8 and 1-9, approaches to Jerusalem and the Benjamin region. We will focus on a cross-section of territory that stretches over four regions. The Shvelah foothills to the west of Jerusalem, the hill country where Jerusalem sits, 2,500 to 2,800 feet above sea level, then to the east, the rugged Judean wilderness sloping down to the Rift Valley and Jericho. Jerusalem's latitude is about the same as the top of the Dead Sea. So, to find Jerusalem quickly on any map, from the top of the Dead Sea, come directly west or left. Remember, however, that Jerusalem is over 4,000 feet higher in elevation than the Dead Sea. Note that the area north of Jerusalem was allotted to the tribe of Benjamin, Jerusalem itself sits within the borders of Benjamin. We will see that the most important routes to Jerusalem, even from the east or west, approach Jerusalem from the north, that is, through the territory of Benjamin. On map 1-9, take a closer look at the important area just north of Jerusalem. The area is called the Central Benjamin Plateau. It is relatively flat ground on the hill country watershed with canyons cutting to its east and west. Only three to seven miles north of Jerusalem, the central Benjamin Plateau is outlined by the biblical cities of Gibeon on the west, Mitzpah on the north, Geba on the east, and Gibeah, the capital of Saul, on the south. Ramah, the hometown of Samuel, is at the center of the plateau. The central Benjamin Plateau is staging ground for main routes heading to Jerusalem. Control of Central Benjamin means access to Jerusalem. A historical example of this can be seen on map 6-2. During the divided monarchy of Israel's history, Basha king of Israel in the north came down and captured Ramah in Central Benjamin, as 1 Kings 15-16 says, that he might prevent anyone from going out or coming in to Asa king of Judah. Through diplomatic maneuvering and war by proxy, Asa removed this threat to his capital in Jerusalem and established a border between Judah in the south and Israel in the north by building up the towns of Mitzpah and Geba. Even east-west routes crossing through the hill country are naturally funneled through Benjamin. The region of Benjamin is lower in elevation than the hill country north and south of it. If one looks at the hill country from the west, Benjamin sits in a kind of saddle Jerusalem and Benjamin are 800 feet lower than the hills near Bethel to the north or Hebron to the south, so east-west routes tend to run through Benjamin. Let's look at the western approach to Jerusalem on map 1-8. The western approach comes from the coastal plain through the Ajalon Valley in the Shvelah foothills. In the Old Testament period, the city of Gezer supervised this area. Gezer today is a large ruin or Tel, that was fortified by the Canaanites, Philistines, and Israelites. As the front door to the capital of Israel, King Solomon fortified Gezer. Solomonic period ruins have been excavated here at Tel Gezer. We're at ancient Gezer on a Solomonic gate! From Gezer, the route continues east through the Ajalon Valley to Emmaus, the New Testament period counterpart to Gezer. From Emmaus, the route angles a bit north to the Beth Horon Ridge route. By staying on the Beth Horon Ridge, the route avoids the deep canyons that drain the hill country. The route joins the central Benjamin Plateau at Gibeon. It connects with the Road of the Patriarchs, or Central Ridge Route, at Ramah, where it turns south past Gibeah to Jerusalem. The Beth Horon Ridge Route is perhaps the most important connection from the coast to the central hill country near Jerusalem. Therefore, there were multiple biblical events that occurred here. Hi, we are on the Beth Horon Ridge route. During Joshua's time, he pursued the Amorites along with the Israelites down this route, and while the Amorites were fleeing, large hailstones fell on them from heaven. Here is an aerial view of the Beth Horon Ridge route. The route comes out from the Ajalon Valley up on the ridge past Lower and Upper Beth Horon. Solomon fortified towns along this route to guard the approach to his capital, Jerusalem. 
There is another route that ascends from the Agilon Valley into the hill country. From Emmaus, this route ascends on a ridge to the town of Kiryat Jearim. Then it angles north and also joins the central Benjamin Plateau at the site of Gibeon. On map 1-8, review the two routes that approach Jerusalem from the west. The first route travels through the flat Agilon Valley plain and then ascends into the hill country on the Beth Horon Ridge. It comes into the central Benjamin Plateau at Gibeon and joins the hill country watershed at Ramah. From Ramah, the route turns south on the road of the Patriarchs, passing Gibeah to Jerusalem. The second route also comes through the Agilon Valley, but ascends a ridge to Kiryat Jearim. Note how Kiryat Jearim is separated from Jerusalem by two deep canyons, the Upper Sorek and Kesselon Valleys. These canyons function as a moat on Jerusalem's western flank, forbidding any easy access to Jerusalem from the west. Instead, the Kiryat Jearim route angles north to Gibeon and Ramah in central Benjamin. There is a route that connects Kiryat Jearim more directly to Jerusalem, but it is not an easy one. It goes treacherously up and down valleys and ridges. Map 5-1 shows a historical event connected to the Kiryat Jearim ridge route. In the days of Samuel, the Ark of the Covenant returned from Philistia to Bet Shemesh and then up to Kiryat Jearim, where the Ark stayed for twenty years until Samuel led Israel in a national repentance. The Ark stayed some one hundred years in Kiryat Jearim until King David brought it into Jerusalem. We can speculate on the route David used. He may have come through central Benjamin, past the cities of Ramah and Gibeah, Saul's capital, or the Ark traveled the more difficult road across the deep valleys flanking Jerusalem's western side. Map 6-1 shows the Beth Horon and Kiryat Jearim ridges being used. Solomon's son Rehoboam had built forts in Judah, but when he forsook the law of the Lord, his forts meant nothing. The Lord brought Pharaoh Shishak of Egypt against him. Shishak's own records parallel the biblical account. Shishak recorded the conquest of towns along both the Beth Horon and Kiryat Jearim ridges as he made his way up to threaten Rehoboam in Jerusalem. Now let's examine the eastern approaches to the hill country and Jerusalem. This photo shows the remnants of a Roman road between Jericho and Jerusalem. On map 1-9, all traffic that comes from the east across the Jordan River is absorbed by Jericho. Jericho is in the Rift Valley, 800 feet below sea level. The most direct route from Jericho to Jerusalem climbs the ascent of Adamim, staying south of the Wadi Kilt. Wadi is an Arabic word, often abbreviated W on our maps, and Nahal, abbreviated N, is Hebrew, meaning canyon. Wadis are often dry and deep, but have water flowing in them during the winter rains. We're in the Judean desert on the way from Jericho to Jerusalem, and it's characterized by deep canyons like the one behind me. The rugged terrain of the Judean desert is drained by deep cutting wadis like the Wadi Kilt visible here. Routes traversing the desert avoid the deep wadis and stay on ridges. Here is the path of the ascent of Adamim along the ridge above Wadi Kilt. Only 15 miles away, Jerusalem is 3,500 feet higher in elevation than Jericho. The Good Samaritan would have descended along the Adamim route when he assisted a man that had fallen among thieves. Jesus traveled on this ridge when he came to Jerusalem to die. The next route that ascends into the hill country from Jericho is called the Ephraim Ridge Route. This route follows a ridge between the drainage of the Wadi Nuema and the Wadi Uja. A route ascending directly west from Jericho is called the Zebuim Route. Note that near the town of Michmash, this route forks. One fork angles north toward Ai and joins the road of the patriarchs near Beth Aven in Bethel. Joshua undoubtedly utilized this route when he conquered and burned Ai. Another fork turns toward the town of Michmash, and a place the Bible calls the Pass. The Pass is a place where one can cross over from one side to the other of the Wadi Suunit. The town of Michmash guards the north side of the Pass. Geba guards the south side. From Geba, one has access to central Benjamin. We are down in the Suunit um, Valley, where 
Um, we were just overlooking between Mikmash and Geba. And this is a place where Jonathan uh, crossed with his armor bearer from Geba down here between these two cliffs, which he had to climb using his hands, up to the Philistine garrison at Mikmash. And uh, the cliffs have, uh, have been named in the Bible in uh, 1 Samuel 14, 4, where it says, On each side of the pass that Jonathan intended to cross to reach the Philistine outpost was a cliff, one called Bozes and the other Sine. One cliff stood to the north toward Mikmash, and the other to the south toward Geba. Map 77 illustrates a historical event at the Pass of Michmash in the days of King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah. A garrison of Assyrian soldiers threatened Jerusalem from the north. Isaiah tells us the enemy came from the north and deposited supplies on the north side of the pass at Michmash. Then Isaiah says, They've crossed over the pass! He's lodging at Geba! Ramah is terrified! Gibeah of Saul has fled! The Assyrians came to Nob and shook their fists threateningly at Jerusalem. But that was enough. The Lord cut the Assyrians down like a tree. Uh, uh, we're just uh, on our way to Jerusalem. And uh, taking a little break right now. I think we're about to go on the, see some parts of the Roman road and Mount of Olives. More or less, man, Jesus did some work to come to die.